It's time for lesson 4.4 here on Wagner Academy for Geometry. We're talking about proving congruence, specifically with triangles, with whatever these things mean. We'll get there. Don't worry. Uh, there's what they mean. So side, 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 congruence postulate. Included angle, side, angle, side, congruence postulate. Those are the big ideas, the big new ideas for this lesson. And use those extra examples in your books as well. So, big question here, huge question. Do we always need to show that all corresponding parts in two triangles are congruent to prove the triangles are congruent? Whew. You ready? If I say yes, you should be very disappointed, but I'm not gonna say yes, I'm gonna say no. And that should make you excited enough to draw a little exclamation smiley face guy. Yes, it's, it's that big because that was gonna be pretty tedious. If we had to prove all three sides, all three angles for every single pair of triangles, that's going to be a lot of extra work, but we don't have to do that. So you can breathe a sigh of relief and, and know that there are other ways, simpler ways, quicker ways to prove triangles are congruent. Here is one of those ways. It's called side, side, side. And it's in our book, it's a congruence postulate. So I'm going to abbreviate congruence like that and postulate like that. This is postulate 4.1, so I'll label it after that in parentheses with a 4.1. Over here, we're going to have something called side angle side. And it's also in our book, a congruence postulate. So we are going to just kind of accept these things without proving them. However, we may talk or do a little experiment showing why they actually work or why there's only one way to make a triangle with three sides that are congruent. And there's only one way to make a triangle with a side, an included angle, and a side being congruent. So in these pictures down here, I didn't label anything yet because I'm going to have you do that with me here. I'm going to say that AB is congruent to DE. When I made this, this slide, I actually copied this triangle just moved it over and rotated it a little bit so these triangles are congruent and we're labeling them to verify that or to, to show that they are in fact congruent. So BC, this side matches up with EF and finally AC matches up with DF. Now if you tried to make another triangle like ABC, having these three sides being the same length as ABC, there's no other way to make it than what you have already. It's going to be congruent to that triangle. So that's basically what this is saying. DEF is just a copy of ABC, just kind of moved around and rotated. There's no other way to make a triangle with three sides of that particular length other than just having it turned around or rotated. There are, <coughs> excuse me, they are going to be congruent no matter what you do. So triangle ABC is congruent to triangle, in this case, let's see if I tried to trick you with the letters. A to B, that's one to two to three tick marks. So we have D to E to F. That's going to match up in alphabetic order there. So I didn't try to trick you on this one. But this is true, and we can use, instead of writing side, side, side every time, we have an abbreviation. Got to love those abbreviations. SSS, that stands for side, side, side. So that's going to be an important thing for us to remember, an important reason for us to remember as we go through this lesson and with pretty much everything with triangles this might show up down the road and then side angle side congruence postulate what's the difference between side 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 and side angle side well with this you just have three sides being congruent with side angle side you have two sides and one angle but that angle notice is in between these two sides when i write it out so in the picture the same thing needs to be the case it has to be in between those two sides. So let's say the two sides congruent in this one are XY and that's going to match up with UV over here and YZ matching up with WV over here. So where's the angle got to go? If side angle side is going to apply it has to be the included angle. It has to be the angle in between or made up by those two sides that are congruent. So this angle and this angle and these two pictures are congruent. And so I can write on this one 
in this case, you have X, Y, Z. That's the one tick mark to the two tick marks. It's got to match up in the same way over here. Got one tick mark to two tick marks. So X, Y, Z, that triangle is congruent to triangle U, V, W in this picture. And that's because of side angle side. So if you had any triangle that had this length, this length, and then this angle being the same in between them, you could literally take that triangle, put it right on top of this triangle, and it would have to look exactly the same. That's really what I was saying over here as well in a different way. So if you were to take any triangle that had three lengths like this, and you were to cut it out and put it right on top of this triangle, it would look exactly the same. There's no other way to make different triangles with those three sides or with these two sides and the included angle being the same. So in a triangle, the angle formed by two sides is called the, I've said it a couple times already, it's called the included angle for those two sides. The included angle. So in this picture, I'm going to get out my different color now. Uh, I did want to, I didn't mean to circle that, so that's a, that's a big thing here. I'll circle that. And for included angle, in this picture, the included angles were angle Y and angle V. So let's write that down as well. So angle Y and angle V are the included angles here. So those angles have to be the angles that are made up by the two congruent sides. So the sides come together and make this angle, the sides come together and make this angle. If you had side, side, and this angle over here, that would be SSA, which is not the same as SAS. So there's a difference. Make sure you understand what included angle means. Example one. Hokey Pete's, we got some big guys and some small guys in this one. And we got potentially a bigger triangle and a smaller triangle. I don't know. Let's find out. Uh, so example one, determine whether the triangles shown below are congruent and explain your reasoning. So before lesson 4.3, we had to show that all three sides and all three angles are congruent. But now we have a couple more options. We could do that still, but we can also use side, side, side. And we could also use side, angle, side. Looking at this picture, I'm thinking it's pretty easy to calculate the lengths of sides given a coordinate plane. It's a little harder to calculate the angles unless you measure it with a protractor, and it's not saying we can use a protractor on this one, so we assume we can't. So we're going to find the lengths of the three sides here and compare it to the lengths of the three sides here. If they all match up, then by side, 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 they're going to be congruent. So let's see what we got. We've got the easy ones. Let's do those first. BI. That would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Is that the same as SM? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Sure is. So I can just say BI equals 6, which equals SM. So this is one of three things. I'm going to circle this, and I'm going to write a little S next to that in my different color. So I've got one of three sides that match up. I need all three though if I'm going to use side, side, side. So let's see. On the picture, as I go, I'm going to use a different color to put what I've proven is true. I've shown that this side and this side are congruent. Now let's see if we can do this for, let's go with IG and LM. Looks like those are the ones that match up. Could you use distance formula? You bet. Could you use Pythagorean theorem? You bet. That's what I'm going to use this time. So I can make these little right triangles here and here. I'm going to end up doing the same thing for the triangle right here, or right triangle right here and here, and I'm going to compare that to here and here. So I'll just fill that in while I'm thinking about it. And so I've got some right triangles in these two pictures that I can use the Pythagorean theorem with to calculate these other unknown, currently unknown side lengths. So I've got Let's go with the smaller ones first. I can say IG squared. The hypotenuse squared equals the sum of the two legs squared. So this would be 
looks like this is one right here. This one's three. This is a one. This is a three. And then in these bigger triangles, this is a three. This is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If you count these up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you've got the same thing. Oh, yeah. All right, so we've got IG squared is going to equal 3 squared plus 1 squared, or 1 squared plus 3 squared. Either way would be fine. And this would also equal LM squared. So that's your A squared plus B squared equals C squared, or I think better said, leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. We can solve this equation for both IG and LM. So I've got, I'm just doing this in one shot this way, one squared plus three squared, that'd be one plus nine, which is 10. And then I could take the square root of everything. Since these things are all equal, I have to change everything in the same way. This would cancel here and here with the squares and square roots. I would have IG equaling the square root of 10 and that would also equal LM. And so it looks like I've got side number two. So I've got another S that would be congruent. So I'm gonna put two marks here and two marks here. So those two sides match up. And finally, we can do the same thing with BG and SL. So let's see what we got with those. I would have BG squared equals three squared plus seven squared. And that would also equal SL squared. That means BG squared would equal 9 plus 49, which is 58. And same as before, we could take the square root of everything. Square roots and squares would cancel. I'm left with BG equals the square root of 58, and that also equals SL. Do I have my third side? I sure do. So now that I showed that all three sides in this triangle match up with all three sides in this triangle, now I can say, are the triangles congruent? Yes, by Y, side angle side. So I can say yes, and I'll write a congruent statement here. B, I, G, did I try to trick you again? Well, I sort of did. One of these triangles actually is not bigger than the other one. These are the same size, they're congruent. But did I try to trick you with the order of the letters? So B, I, G, that's one to two to three marks if you connect them in that order. S, M, L, yep. I did not try to trick you, it goes in that order. So S, M, L. So that is true by side, side, side. And I'll box that in, that is a final answer there. So box, box that in. All right, example two, write a two column proof to prove the triangles are congruent. So two column proofs we put up here. This is a more formal way to, to go about proving things or showing th things have to be true. We're gonna put our statements in the left column, the reasons in the right column. And then we are given some information here and we're gonna try to prove that this is true. So this kind of looks like a timer to me. Uh, so that's why I went with those letters there, but let's write down our statement. So up here, we're gonna write what's given and our reason will be given. We always start with the things we're given. So M is the midpoint. I'm gonna write somewhat small here. So M is midpoint. I'm gonna abbreviate things as well. So the midpoint of IE, segment IE. We can also say M is the midpoint of TR and IT is congruent segment, IT is congruent to segment ER. All that stuff is right here, given in the information we are given to us. Step two, okay, let's, let's take what we had here and anything that's automatically clear from the given information, I'm gonna put in my normal color and then things, extra things we can prove, I'm going to add in a new color. I think that's a great way to do these types of problems. So IT is congruent to ER. That's very clear from the picture then that this would be congruent to this. I could put a mark here and the same number of marks on that segment. I didn't mean to make those look like, almost look like two lines there. So 
for two tick marks. There we go, one and one. Since it's the midpoint, based on that information, I could then say, so I'm going to use my different color now, since M is the midpoint of IE, that means it splits IE in half, it cuts it in half, I could then say, based on that definition of midpoint, or the midpoint theorem is what we have in our book, we can say that IM and EM would be congruent. So I'm going to put that as my second statement here. Or my second group of statements, I guess I could say. So this is EM is congruent to IM. And this is by, depending on the book, definition of midpoint or midpoint theorem, we're going with midpoint theorem because that's how our book describes this. And so we also have, based on that same theorem, M is the midpoint of TR, we could also say that this is congruent to this right here. So TM and RM also have to match up. So I can say TM is congruent to RM. Same reason, midpoint theorem. So I can put that with both. Step three, we're trying to eventually get here. This needs to be our last step, that Tim is congruent to Rem. Do we have enough information to prove that at this point? Looks like we do, I would say definitely. So we have TI, IM, MT matching up in a corresponding order with RE, EM, and MR. We have side, side, side matching up with side, side, side here. So I can now say what I'm trying to prove. I have all the information I need to conclude what I was trying to conclude. So Tim, triangle Tim is congruent to triangle Rem. And that is by, in our picture, side, side, side. Could you have actually said that this angle was congruent to this angle? Sure, vertical angles. So we could have said that and that were congruent and then we could have used side, angle side instead. So sometimes there's different ways to prove things. Based on the information they gave us though, I feel like this was the most straightforward and obvious way to prove what we were trying to prove. Now example three, write a flow proof instead of a two column proof. Could you use a two column proof if it didn't say you had to use a flow proof? Sure, but we're gonna use a flow proof this time just to see an example of that as well to prove the triangles are congruent. And so this kind of looked like a spike to me. I feel, feel like this, I don't wanna keep this as a logo for a company maybe I'll start up someday. Spike, it kind of looks like the micro spikes you see on little things that you can put over your shoes like that if you want to walk in snow or ice during the, the winter or climb some some mountains during the winter or still when there's snow on the top yeah I, this is mine don't take this this is my logo it's gonna be a, a big hit anyways given we're given pi is congruent to chi psi is congruent to ei and we're trying to prove Ips is congruent to Ike. Those two triangles are the same. So let's take the given information and put that on the picture. So PI, KI. I'm starting with my normal color. Extra things I'll add in in a different color later. So one mark, one mark here and here. And SI and EI are the same. So I can put two and two there and there. And it's a flow proof now. So with flow proofs, Remember from a few lessons back, we talked about flow proofs. I said to look at an example in the book. We, we hadn't actually done one. Oh, we're gonna do one here. And so we can say PI is congruent to KI. And we were supposed to put those in boxes. I wouldn't mind if you used circles instead. I wouldn't get too fussy about that or particular about that, um, but make sure you have the, the statement either boxed in or circled, and then underneath that, directly underneath that, you need to give a reason for that statement that you just made. So this would be true because it's given. We could also say the same thing for SI. This should be segment, let me include that in there. So put little segment marks above there and there. And then SI, segment SI is congruent to segment EI. For the same reason, it's given to me. Am I given anything else? Nope, nothing other than the picture. So can I look at the picture and maybe prove something else based on the picture is also congruent? Because it looks like I have side and side, but I either need a third side or I need that included angle. 
hint, hint, included angle. Look, look here, look, oh wait, add this in a different color. We've got an angle here, we've got an angle here. Why are these two congruent to each other? Because they are vertical angles. You got these two perfectly straight lines that they form if you put them together. That means here's a third reason that can combine with these two reasons together to get what I'm trying to prove. So I, I can't just say angle I because it's not clear what that is, but I could say angle SIP, S-I-P is congruent to angle E-I-K would be the way that matches in that second one. So angle E-I-K, angle SIP, those are congruent by vertical angles. So you could say vertical angles, you could say vertical angles are congruent. I would take either of those. Some books even say that vertical angles theorem, um, but vertical angles is sufficient for me here. And now these are all flowing together. So these three ideas coming together, this is, why don't I do this off to the side? I think this is a good idea. This was a side. This was a, another side. And then this was the included angle in between those sides. So I've got everything I need here. Uh, this is going to flow together with this and this to give me my final statement. I've got IPS, what I'm trying to prove. IPS was congruent to triangle IKE. Ips to Ike. And why is that? Well, these three ideas flowed together. We had a side, we had the included angle and the side. So this is true by side, angle, and side. Will they always be looking like this? No, sometimes you have, you have like two ideas up here that flow to another idea and eventually later on flow together. These just happen to flow all together right after, right after stating them. So if you wanna see another example of a flow proof within the context of this lesson, please check out page 202. Page 202, you're gonna see another example of a flow proof like this. If you wanna check out another example of a two column proof in your book, please check out example one on page 201 if you're one of my students. And if you wanna see another example like this, they had that as example two. I used it as example one, or at least a similar problem here. So make sure you understand side, 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 angle, side. I guess I'll underline that too right there. That was the, the big idea. We can use that as an abbreviation. Make sure you understand what an included angle is. And besides that, make sure you have a great day. I'll see you later for lesson 4.5.